Hello everybody, my name is Tom McGrath. I'm a scientist by training, I have a PhD in chemistry, and I've studied the design, development, and research into smoke-free alternatives for the last 10 years. Today, I'm gonna to talk about combustion and why it's very important that we eliminate it. As Marcus explained, combustion reactions due to the high temperatures involved lead to the generation of smoke and ash and to the emissions of harmful and potentially harmful constituents. A combustion process and its characteristics are very well known in the fields of combustion science and fire safety and can be defined as the oxidative reaction of a fuel that is fast enough to release heat and light usually in the form of a glow or a flame. Everyday combustion reactions such as burning fossil fuels, wood, candles and the tobacco in a cigarette are seldom complete combustion processes and incomplete combustion products are actually formed. Most of us are very familiar with examples of flaming combustion. But in a cigarette, when the tobacco is set on fire, we have a smoldering combustion process or a flameless combustion process. If we look at a cigarette and the tobacco being the fuel, a combustion reaction can be set up when the tobacco is heated at temperatures above 400 degrees C for an oxidative reaction to occur. So the oxygen in this case would be the oxygen in air and the source of heat that raises the temperature of tobacco would be a match or an actual lighter. Once this combustion reaction sets in, the temperature at the tip of a cigarette is greater than 600 degrees C and when air is drawn through the tip of the cigarette, the temperature rises above 850 degrees C. To put this in perspective, this is about four times hotter than a frying pan. In designing a portfolio of smoke-free alternatives, it is very important that we eliminate combustion and that we control the temperature to which a solid matrix, such as tobacco, or a liquid matrix, such as an e-liquid, are actually heated. With our heat control technology, we are able to raise the temperature of tobacco sufficiently to release nicotine and flavors, but also low enough that we avoid combustion. So what evidence do we have to support the absence of combustion in our smoke-free products. When air is drawn into the tobacco heating system, instead of it increasing, as would be the case in a combustion process, the temperature of tobacco decreases. If you were to take away the source of energy in the system, in this case, turn the heater off, you see a rapid decrease in the temperature of the system. As there are no combustion reactions, the tobacco in the tobacco stick is not consumed to ash and to generate smoke, but actually remains intact. Analysis of the aerosol that's generated from the tobacco heating system shows that it is absent of combustion-derived solid particles. When you don't have air or you don't have an oxidant, you cannot have combustion. Operating the tobacco heating system in an atmosphere of nitrogen, i.e. in the absence of oxygen, yields very similar results than when experiments are run in air. So showing that the tobacco heating system is independent, in fact, of the atmosphere around it. So why is this important? Scientific studies have shown that as the temperature of the tobacco increases, the levels of harmful and potentially harmful constituents also increase. So by eliminating combustion and reducing the temperature to which the tobacco is heated to, it will significantly reduce the overall levels of harmful and potentially harmful constituents. In the tobacco heating system aerosol, the levels of these harmful and potentially harmful constituents are on average reduced by 90 to 95 percent compared to cigarette smoke. So, to sum up, elimination of combustion is a fundamental foundation in the heat not burn principle. By heating tobacco to temperatures below combustion, we are able to reduce significantly the levels of harmful and potentially harmful constituents. I just want to take the opportunity to thank everybody for their time.